uh, good evening. Uh, what do you have to say on the AP report published uh, on the which cited internal WHO recordings and claim that in your own view, China delayed providing the details uh, to the WHO by at least two weeks. Is the report factual and what is your response to this? Thank you. Um, our leadership and staff have worked night and day in compliance with the organization's rules, regulations to support and share information with our member states equally and engage in frank and forthright conversations with governments at all levels. That's what I would like to say. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ryan, for this. Uh, uh, let's try to have Isabel from FA News Agency. Isabel? Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Eh, gracias, gracias, Tari. Eh, quisiera preguntar eh, por qué la situación es tan mala en Sudamérica y Centroamérica, a pesar de que los países, muchos países de estas regiones implementaron medidas de contención muy temprano, incluidos confinamientos estrictos. Y en relación a esto, quisiera saber a partir de lo que sabemos del comportamiento del virus en otras regiones del mundo, ¿qué recomendarían a los gobiernos latinoamericanos para detener la propagación del virus? I can, I can begin. I think, first of all, when we look at Latin America in general, it's important, uh, and, 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 and the Americas in general, it's important to distinguish that, the, as happened in Europe, as happened in, in Southeast Asia. The epidemic is not at the same stage of development in each and every country. Uh, the small island states in the Caribbean have done a superb job in containing the virus and in, in stopping disease and in saving lives. But we are very concerned about Haiti at the moment because of its unique circumstance, its unique fragility, and the fact that the disease is accelerating in a highly vulnerable population. And I think you can say the same in each sub-region for the Central America. Similarly, we are concerned uh, about uh, the disease situation in, in, in places like Nicaragua. However, we're seeing a different scenario in, in other countries. Um, similarly, in, in, in South America, we see increasing uh, continued intense community transmission in places like Peru and Brazil um, and, and in other countries. Um, the, uh, we, we might have said the same thing a number of weeks ago uh, in, in Europe. Uh, or in North America or other places, why is the situation so bad? The epidemic has developed <clears throat> in each and every region or sub-region in a slightly different way, but what has been common to many regions has been intense community transmission. And it is clear that once that intense community transmission has been established, <clears throat> it's very difficult to root the virus out. <clears throat> and it takes <clears throat> a comprehensive strategy, not just public health and social measures, it requires to have uh, a highly involved and empowered community. It requires strong coordination and governance at, at, at government level. It requires an all of society uh, approach. It requires sustained commitment. Uh, and it also, uh, even in those situations, even in those situations, you see particular settings in which the disease can take off and cause a tremendous amount of, 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 of uh, suffering and, and, and death. We see that scenario in Europe and in North America in long-term care facilities. We've seen that emerge uh, in, in, um, in closed settings, uh, in, in uh, detention centers, in, in others. So there are particular settings in which the disease can amplify um, and cause uh, more difficulties. Uh, we've been saying uh, again and advising uh, since uh, the beginning of, of this uh, uh, global epidemic to that it's this ability to implement a whole series of measures across society uh, that, uh, that allow a country to, to bring a disease under control, continue to suppress the virus, and ultimately exit all of these measures. We've seen many, many, many good examples of that. And it's not that every country has done the same thing. Uh, what's been remarkable in this is that countries have done slightly different things according to their context. But what countries that have been successful have done is they've taken all of those measures. They've been very serious about community engagement. They've been very, very serious about educating people and bringing the community along with them. They've been clear in their communications. They've let the response be driven by science. They have 
implemented and tried to sustain surveillance and finding the virus at all times during the response, even though it's very, very difficult when you have very intense transmission. And they are focused on targeting their public health and social measures and sustaining those measures and only lifting those measures when they see indications that they're making progress. So it's not one thing or another. So in terms of advising countries in Central and South America, <clears throat> it's about persistence, it's about consistency, it's about making sure that your messages are clear, making sure your community is on board, uh, and ensuring that uh, you're driven by science, driven by the evidence. That evidence is, lo is global in the sense that there are global uh, facts and, and global knowledge, but it's also local. There's a local context and there's local learning. So there's, we need to adapt global knowledge, but we need to implement with local knowledge as well. And I think countries that have matched the global science uh, with their local knowledge, and they've been consistent and persistent in that, they're the ones that have had success. Um, so there is no absolute recipe for success. There is no SOP. There is no algorithm that gives you success against this virus. Uh, it is a set, a complex set of, um, <clears throat> of actions implemented by responsible governments driven by science who are prepared to sustain their action for as long as it takes to suppress and stop this virus. If I might add, just to say, to supplement what Mike has said, that many countries uh, in other parts of the world are exactly where countries in Latin America are right now in seeing some very intense transmission and, and outbreaks, and we can learn from them. Um, and we can learn from, from, from each other. And what we've seen in, in many countries where the situation just seemed overwhelming, um, where the, the, it, was, it was unclear where, where exactly the virus is, it just seems like it's everywhere. It's 22 what hours. What we've seen many countries do is target their efforts and prioritize their efforts to, to find out where are the highest, where's the highest concentration of this virus? Where's the highest concentration of um, the, the virus itself circulating? And what we know about this virus is that it likes close contact with people. And when the public health workforce and the testing strategy focuses on um, closed settings and vulnerable people, um, and you start testing those appropriately, and you, and you use your limited supplies and limited workforce in targeted areas, you can start to see the boundaries of where that outbreak actually is. Um, and that really helps focus all of the efforts for the contact tracers, for your testing strategy, um, mobilizing your clinical care facilities to, to care for individuals. And it helps narrow down the problem bit by bit. Um, and tackling this virus at the lowest administrative level as you can is helpful. Looking at it at the, at the national level is one thing and having a strong national plan, but implementing these efforts at the lowest administrative level will be helpful to help you find where the virus is and target what you need uh, to do. Um, another way uh, countries have tried to tackle overwhelming epidemics is to focus on vulnerable workers, vulnerable people. These are our frontline workers, these are healthcare workers, and in Latin America and in many countries across the globe, we see an alarming number of healthcare worker infections um, and an alarming number of healthcare deaths. Um, and so prioritizing testing there will help you see where the virus is and who's getting infected, looking at your older populations, looking at people with underlying medical conditions so that they are prioritized for care, so that we can ensure that those individuals do not develop severe disease and die. Um, and as Mike said, adapting your, your efforts to the situation, to the context in where you live, and to do that at the lowest administrative level as you can, can help break down the problem. Looking at it at a national level is important, but targeting those efforts at the lowest administrative level as you can, can help break down the problem and start to tackle it bit by bit. We will now go to the Swiss uh, public television.